it's in my lungs. It's going into my heart. Sarah, calm down. Have you been watching Grey's Anatomy again? No, I've been on WebMD all day. Well, this is shingles. I have hentavirus, meningitis, bird flu, brain tumor, anthrax poisoning. I know I have prostate cancer. Oh no, I have scurvy. Always tempting to turn to Dr. Google for an instant health diagnosis, but it can be unreliable and risky. Now, artificial intelligence, or AI, is outperforming doctors in some areas of healthcare. Scientists at Stanford have created an algorithm that can successfully identify malignant melanoma by comparing the patient's skin to a database of over 200,000 images. And the Stanford computer got it right 95% of the time. That's 8% higher than a team of human dermatologists. The computer also got it wrong less of the time, which could mean fewer unnecessary surgeries. And there are other, more famous examples. The category is 19th century novelists. Now we come to Watson, who is Bram Stoker, and a two-day total of 77,147. IBM's Watson famously destroyed the competition on Jeopardy in 2011. Watson was developed by IBM for health applications, and it successfully diagnosed a woman's rare form of leukemia by analyzing 20 million oncology studies, and it saved her life. AI is making leaps in developing treatments, too. A U.S. company created a computer algorithm that can sift through combinations of molecules in a split second, creating more effective drugs for Parkinson's disease. So it looks like a win-win, right? Well, early and effective diagnoses and advances in treatment mean healthier, longer lives, and robot caregivers will be there as we age as well. However, as with all tech advances, there are ethical concerns. Machines are only as smart as the people who program them. So who's to blame if something goes wrong? The race to artificial intelligence and health will pit man and machine against our deadliest diseases, but we're still in the early stages, and there are lots of questions yet to be answered. Joining me now to unpack some of these issues is tech expert Dakara Small. So uh, what are we talking about? Are doctors going to be replaced by robot overlords here? No, not anytime soon. I think it's important to separate science from science fiction. We're not going to have some type of futuristic robot at our side in hospitals treating us. Not okay. anytime soon. Okay, so but what does it look like? I mean, we heard a bit about the idea of, of pictures being submitted to look at a melanoma on, uh, on someone's skin. Mm -hmm. Is that what we're talking about? What does AI in medicine look like to you and me? So when we're talking about AI, it's really great to separate AI from machine learning. So artificial intelligence is just essentially a smart robotic device, whereas machine learning is smart technology that uses predictive analytics to make smart decisions based on their circumstances. So when we're talking about, like, for instance, diagnosing skin mm -hmm. cancer, what machine learning does is it takes a bunch of information in and uses that to diagnose and, and kind of uh, triage future situations. The one thing I noticed in that Stanford study, okay, the computer, the yes. AI was right 95% of the time, which yes. means it's wrong 5% of the time. So mm -hmm. clearly they, like humans, aren't perfect. Mm -hmm. They're not perfect. I think as time goes on, they'll become uh, much better. But again, when it comes to artificial intelligence, they're only as good as the data that they're fed. Mm. So we're in such an early stage right now that the data that they're using and they're processing to make these decisions isn't 100% right now. But these are decisions that are right now being made by human doctors. Yes. So if I yes. am a human doctor or mm -hmm. looking to become one, mm -hmm. does this not kind of jeopardize my job in the long run? I don't think so. I think it actually provides better services in healthcare to Canadians. Yeah. I think if you have a doctor who also can use really smart technology to better treat their patient, it's a win-win. But if the machine ends up being right more often than the human, <laughs> mm -hmm. why do we need the human? Or I at least think, as many of them. Right, so I think, um, Machines are amazing and they're really great at predictive analytics and diagnosing people, but what they're really bad at is ethics and common sense. So I think we're always gonna need humans to make those types of decisions. There's also the question of sort of bedside manner, I suppose. Bedside if you're, manner, yeah. you're actually in a hospital, you don't want just uh, a giant computer blob rolling up. And exactly, yeah, yeah. I mean, again, that is if you have the opportunity to have a family physician or a doctor, yeah. right? Yeah, Yeah, and that's a big question because this could be very helpful in areas of the country that, that where there are real troubles getting family physicians. Exactly, and I think that's sometimes missing from the discussion, what you just mentioned, because there are a lot of people who don't have a family physician, and when they do need care, they go to the emergency. So how would this play out if you have, as, as AI grows, because clearly we're here now, yes. this is not some, something in the future, but it will grow into the future. Mm -hmm. But what does that look like if I'm in a, an underserved community now? How does AI then help me 
in terms of getting access to medical mm -hmm. care. So really where it helps you right now is doctors have the ability to analyze thousands of records in record time. So that means that they can help more patients because they're not doing some of the main mundane things that you would normally have to do. So I think that's what, if you're an underserved community, that's what's available to you right now. But in the future, I think you'll start to see medicine entering the home where you don't have to go to a doctor's office to receive advice or to get treatment. You'll just be able to find it from your bedside. Doctors maybe being somewhat replaced by an artificial <laughs> intelligence. What about journalists? They're fine, right? Oh, they're fine. Yeah. Tech yeah. experts? Oh, we're good. For All centuries, good. we're right. in high in demand. Okay. Takara Small, thanks so much. Thank you. Next, he has never met a secret tape recording he couldn't handle, but is that about to change for Donald Trump?